so Steve, you asked me earlier if um, if Teladot was the second worst earnings I saw, <laughs> and uh, no, I'm actually going to give that award to Roku. Okay. Um, so here is uh, that. Well, I've written a little line to myself just just in case I forgot. These earnings are bad. That's what I've written at the top of the uh, of my note to myself. <laughs> Um, so just to give you an idea, consensus for revenues was 805 million. Uh, Roku came in at 764. That's a miss of 5%. Gross profit, um, they were expecting 394 million. They came in at 355. That was a miss. Gross margin was expected 49. They came in 46.5%. That was a miss. So they missed on revenues, platform revenues, player, gross profit, gross margin, adjusted EBITDA, adjusted EBITDA margin, adjusted EPS, ARPU, and they missed big on guidance. They guided 22.4% down from consensus, 27.9% down on gross profit, 400% down on adjusted EBITDA, and 153% down on net income. What's um, left? At nothing. They've guided for <laughs> around 3% revenue growth, uh, which oh. for something like Roku is just not enough. So I pulled out some stats, and for the people watching the video, I'll just flick them on screen for you. But um, Roku's active accounts is, is growing like you'd want it to grow. Uh, it's on that steady uptrend. Uh, it's ARPU is on that steady uptrend as well. It's on $44. Um, from, from the customer side of it, what you're extracting from the customer... It, it looks pretty good. So I watched Brian Stoffel did a pretty decent review of Roku. He's pretty fair of it. He said, uh, and I quote, the results for advertising companies like Google, like Snap and like Roku shows me that there's a hierarchy. And I think I agree with that. So we, we've discussed before, Steve, that um, there's like discretionary and staples when it comes to marketing spends, uh, very much like there is in retail spending. And, and that has become really apparent to me uh, during this, this downturn where, where people have, sort of been moving away from your your rokus and moving away from your snaps and putting it into the more established uh uh marketers who they know from previous um from previous campaigns that they can get a return on so i had a look at just why roku like has just missed so quickly it all seems to have happened like last last time's earnings were fantastic so so one of the reasons this has happened is that to differentiate itself, Roku has actually allows its advertisers to cancel their campaigns with only 48 hours notice. So I had a look around everywhere else and the industry standard is anywhere between about a month and 12 months. So this means that like Roku's revenue is like a, a really uh, real indicator of the current advertising landscape. So in poor times... This is going to like just shoot up, and you're going to think this is amazing. But in worse times, like people can literally cancel advertising on a whim, which is great for people who are advertising, but not so great for shareholders. So, look, I've exited this position. Uh, I took my licks on this one. I think this is too risky now. Uh, having found that uh, stat out, I, I would never even thought to have looked for it because. Uh, yeah, I just wouldn't expect to have 40 hours. Now, so that's the idea of having uh, a little bit more comprehensive look into and understanding how, how the business runs. I guess I, I've just totally missed it. I think uh, Roku at the moment is a B-tier advertiser that has the potential to become an A-tier advertiser. But I don't want to be in a B-tier advertiser when people are pulling advertising out of the market. And that is essentially what Roku uh, Roku's whole business is built on. That's really, really interesting. So I was uh, listening to something the other day on basically the evolution of kind of marketing from uh, paper impression through to paper transaction, basically, and so on. And you see the risk gradually, gradually, gradually shift over to the kind of platform provider where uh, the kind of advertiser says, look, um, I'll pay you per, uh, first of all, just for space, then for impressions, then for clicks, then for um, transactions and so on. I, it's a bold move from Roku, right? Uh, if they can, really if they bold. can make it work, uh, offering you the flexibility to say, "Look, if you don't want us to run your ad, just give us forty-eight hours notice and we're done," rather than having that kind of tied up and and locked in. Um, is their balance sheet any good in a kind of downturn? This is where you start worrying, right, about companies that uh, put themselves under pressure in this sort of situation. If they've got debt that they need to service, then they need to not find too many of their stuffs getting cancelled. It's a fairly robust balance sheet. Um, I think um, I think they'll be just fine going through this. I think what's going to happen is is that essentially growth's going to peter out to absolute nothing. Um, essentially, you're going to end up 
with the low margin revenue from the Roku sticks and a little bit from the advertisers that, that, that choose to stick around. But that there is what also worried me about pins as well, is that Roku presented to me an environment where I think BTA slash experimental marketers are... Uh, are, are experiencing a slowdown roku evidently has shown me that uh, and they're projecting that it's going to continue for the next quarter as well which made me look at pinterest straight away and go oh you could be in serious trouble too the difference being is that uh, pinterest is a much fairer valuation than than something like roku but yeah they uh, well i i'm i pinterest reports on august of like we'll find out very soon but i just worry at the moment for for stocks like that